Once you have your personal drawing template created, go ahead and close this out and then open up your real Lego brick file. And then I want you to go up to file and go to not new drawing template this time. This time go to new drawing and go to from design. I want you to go ahead and select not from scratch. I want you to either find my personal drawing template from your data panel over here, or you can go to browse and find it that way. It should be in engineering lessons and in drawing sheets. You should be able to find it and hit select. And then automatically it selects 11 by eight and a half. You can select, if you go back to from scratch, you can select other options like 17 by 11, and that'll help you on the certification exam to be able to find that. But go ahead and make sure that you select my personal drawing template and hit OK. And so now we're working on a file and it automatically populates my name, the name of the project, the name of the file, and the only thing that's missing is the scale, and that's because we haven't put it down yet. And you notice it automatically asks me to put down my base view, which is my front view, because it's selected. If I wanted to, I could make it the top view. Let me go ahead and hit cancel. If that's not automatically populated or you want to start over, you just have to go up here and click base view, and then it gives it to you as an option again. You can see this has popped up again. I'm going to put my front view down in the very middle or near the middle of my page and hit OK. And I want to keep it on scale from one to one, right? And then I'm going to zoom in. And you'll notice that the hidden lines automatically show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this front view until we see this box around it. And I'm going to double click. And you'll see that the drawing view screen, this little drawing view window pops up again. I want to change from visible with hidden edges as the standard. I want to switch that to just regular visible edges. And this makes it where the hidden edges go away. And I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And then I want to start giving myself these other views. And we've done this before. But I'm going to go next to base view and select projected view. And I want to click on my base view and I want to project other views. If I drag up, you can see I put down my top view. If I drag to the right, you can see I put down my side view. And if I drag up and to the right, you can see I put my isometric view. But I'm not going to right click and hit continue yet. I want to add a couple of extra views because this is kind of a complicated part. I want to drag down below my front view and you can see I get my bottom view. And I want to drag down and to the right and get this sort of bottom right isometric view as well. So we can look at the inside of this shape as well on the bottom. And then I'm going to right click and hit OK. And you can see it has my front top right and isometric. We just added a couple extra views because there's a couple of details that we need to address for anybody who wants to build 10,000 of these parts. And I like these orthographic projections to be invisible edges only, but I do like my isometric views to be shaded. So I'm going to hover over this isometric view, double click, and change from visible edges to this sh blue shaded option. I'm going to click on it, and then you'll see it automatically colors it in and hit close. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to hover over it until this box pops up, double click, and go to shaded as well and then hit close. And you can see now these are colored, which is good because we can see these little details. If they want to know what they're looking at, what these dimensions mean, they can look at these two views to see what it's talking about. And so this is nothing new. And just a reminder, how do you put dimensions down? We could put some dimensions down. Let me grab my dimension tool. So let's say I wanted to know the width of this entire part. I can click from edge to edge after I select dimension and drag it down. And there we go. We've got a dimension. And of course, we can dimension all the little things if we wanted to, right? If I wanted to know the dimension from this edge to this edge, for example, I could have that as well. I'm going to right click and hit OK. Just a reminder on how to put dimensions down. But there are some new things I want to teach you. For example, this section view option. I'm going to go ahead and select this. And I'm going to make a section of my top view here. And so if I click on my top view, I can now put down some sort of line. We call this a cutting plane line. And hopefully it'll be clear in just a second why we call this a cutting plane line. And I don't want to go through the middle. I don't want to make a section through the middle of my shape. Instead, I'm going to hover over this bottom left circle until it magnifies. And after it magnifies, I'm going to drag out to the left so that I have that little green dotted line. And I'm going to click and drag across, all the way across, and I'm going to click again. 
And then once I have this new option, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to right click and go to continue. And you can see what that does is it creates a section. I'm now looking at it from the inside. If I drag down, it makes it right side up. If I drag up, it makes it upside down. I'm going to go ahead and drag back down and I'm just going to, I'm not going to hold the shift button. I'm just going to click it and let go. And what that does is it gives me a little bit more freedom with this. It stays that way. If I click shift again, that turns that off and it aligns it. I'm going to click shift again. I want to keep it where I can do this. I want to line it up so it snaps on the bottom and then drag it straight up. I want it to be right side up when I put it down, but I do want to put it down right above it, aligned with this view. It should snap into place. You should get those green dots. I'm going to click and then I'm going to say, okay. And you'll see that this section AA pops up right over my top view. I'm just going to click on section and then I'm going to drag it over here to the left. And what is section AA? Well, this is a section view from my cutting plane line A. A. And what are we looking at here? Well, if I go back to my real Lego brick and I put down an inspect sectional analysis and I click on this face and just drag it in all the way to the center of these circles like I did, we are looking at this, the section of this face right here. I'm going to go ahead and go into analysis and delete that section so we're not looking at it go back to my home view because I don't want it to mess with this view in here at all. I don't actually want that sectional analysis, but that's what we're looking at here. Why would we want to put it here at this point instead of the center? Well, the main reason why is if you look, if we look at it from the bottom view, there are actually two things that I want to look at from the inside. I want to see this piece, which is also this piece on the other end, but I also want to look at this circle here. And so I'll go ahead and grab my sectional analysis tool again. And if I drag it all the way to the center, do you see how I can only examine these circles, but I can't examine this rectangular drop or this rectangular drop? This is why I selected this, because now I can examine both these circular uh, drops here and this rectangular piece. That's why I selected what I did. I'm going to hit cancel and then we'll go back over here. So that's why I selected where it is, but here's my section view. And if I wanted to, I could grab my dimension tool and I can start measuring things on the inside. Like I can measure the distance of this line from this inside edge, for example, if I wanted to. Just to give you an example. And then, okay, that's how section views work on a drawing sheet. But there's one more that I want to talk about, one more option in here, and that is the detail view. And this is really important because if you zoom in on your bottom view, you'll notice these little tiny rectangles and you can imagine how annoying it would be to try and dimension these little tiny rectangles. It's really hard to see what you're measuring when you zoom out and you look at the drawing sheet as a whole. Remember, this is the size of a regular piece of printer paper. And so what I can do is I can select my detail view and then I want to make a detail on my bottom view here. So I'm going to select my bottom view and then I'm going to zoom in, pick this farthest right little rectangle extrusion and get that little triangle there. And I'm going to click and drag out and I'm going to create a circle around this rectangle and this rectangle over here as well, just a little bit bigger and then just click. And what that does is it creates a zoom in. If you look, it's a scale of two to one of that little section that I selected. I'm going to drag it over here to the left and hit OK. And you can see I now have this detail B of a scale of two to one. If you want to know what that is, that's right here. That's B, it's that little section there. And what if I wanted to make it bigger? Well, I can double click on that box and I can go of a scale of four to one. And so we type in that colon, type in four, two, one, and hit close. And you can see it makes it even bigger. Well, that makes sense. And if I don't like where that is, I can drag that up. And if I wanted to, I could now dimension that as well. I can say, well, what is this dimension? And it's a lot easier to see this because it is zoomed in and I don't have to zoom in or get a magnifying glass to figure out what I'm looking at. Right click. OK. And so this video has just been a review of how to do a drawing sheet, but also how to do more advanced features in this drawing sheet. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to call it real Lego brick drawing and hit save. And it should pop up over here in my data panel. 
and it looks like it's not popping up for me, so I wonder why I must have accidentally saved in the wrong place. And if this happened to you too, it's not a big deal. You can go in and find it. I'm going to go back to my engineering lessons project, and if I look, there it is right there. It's saved in the wrong place. No big deal. I'm just going to right-click on it and go to Move, and I'm going to move it back into my Drawing Sheets folder and hit Move. And then if I look in my Drawing Sheets folder, there it is, and there you go. We are done with this video.